Hey, what's going on, everyone? Before we get into our conversation, I want to let you know this podcast is sponsored by BetRivers.com. BetRivers.com, the best place for all your sports gambling needs. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. You can also watch all of these episodes on the Field of 68 YouTube channel. Now, let's get into our conversation. Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Eric Dievendorf, your host of the Scores Table podcast. And today, we got on another great guest, my guy. He's one of the most athletic guys to come through Syracuse. Kenyon Martin type, uh, fought through a lot of injuries, played in a lot of games, 127 games, uh, had a great four-year career. Uh, my guy, appreciate you coming on, Terrence Roberts. What's going on, appreciate man? Appreciate you having me, man. Appreciate you having me. You already Bro, know you it's been going a, on over here, man. It's been a minute, man. It has been. It's been a while, man. You look good, man. You look lean and in, in shape, like. Hey, that's what cycling do for you. <laughs> I know. I see that. I see that, man. So let's start. Let's start back home, man. Start. Uh, well, you were born in Newark, right? Mm-hmm. Born in Newark, raised in Jersey City. Raised in Jersey City. So kind of let's start there. Uh, how, how kind of how was the game introduced to you, and you know how did you get started with that? Uh, for the most part, you know, just being an inner city kid, just kind of out and about. You know, my family. I, pretty athletic family for the most part that was really into sports all the kids that were like my age kind of felt the need to do it it was tall kind of stuck out like a sore thumb and a lot of my friends a lot of my friends hooped and I the older I get the more older I got the more I got into it the more serious I started to take it and then you know high school really changed it for me when I started when I went to St. Anthony's it was just a whole new world a whole new seriousness to it and I just fell in love with it from then on what you think? I mean, at what age was you really like? All right, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be serious about this thing. I think like around third, like around thirteen, I was like, when I realized, like, you know, I didn't want to go to a public high school in my area. I was like, Cause it's all bad. So yeah. I was like, around thirteen, fourteen, when it was just about time to go to high school, I was like, okay, I gotta figure something out. I gotta find find a way into a good high school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Through, through God's graces, Coach Hurley found me, and, you know, it was it was all curtain call after that. So what, like an open gym or something, or how'd that happen? Well, you know, Coach Hurley, he kind of got his eyes and feet and, and everything in Jersey City. So someone told him, I think one of the guys that went to St. Anthony's, that Coach Me was under him at some point, and they just was like, hey, you know, there's this tall kid, he, you know, doesn't really have a place, doesn't really have a school he's going to. You should take a look at him. And Coach Hurley was just like, yeah, you're coming. It's point blank period. It was no question. His <laughs> name was like, you're coming to St. Anthony's. I don't care what you got going on. Tell your parents. <laughs> it's like, okay. So what you was in, so you was in Newark though, like until what age? Oh no, I was just born in Newark. Okay. Okay. So you, but you grew up in Jersey city like, from like yeah. when early. Yeah, day one. I, we lived we lived in lived in Jersey. We had family and stuff in Newark and stuff like that, but I didn't live out there. Okay, okay. So you get to you get to St. Anthony's probably you probably about what fourteen? Yeah, fourteen. Might have been fifteen because I got left back in fourth grade. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, four. We'll, we'll say fourteen. So right. I mean, what was that experience like going in there? Because you know St. Anthony's, Bob Hurley. I mean, that's that's big time all around the country. So, you know, what was Absolutely. that experience like going in there? I think it, it, it was life changing for me because it, it made me have to be mature at a really young age. Like everything was kind of on you. You had to be on time and on time meant like 30 minutes to an hour early for everything. Right. Yeah. If you were on time, you were late and everyone was running for it. Um, a lot of practices, a lot of hard work, no downtime in the house every day by eight o'clock and he had eyes everywhere. So like you, you could be out walking a dog and get a phone call or get to practice the next day and realize you got to do suicides because you decided to walk the dog too late. <laughs> so well, hold on, did y'all, but you still stayed at the crib or was you at, did y'all have dorms? No, 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 we, we had our own cribs. It, it was a private, okay. it was a private, private school, but it wasn't, it wasn't like that. Just a regular private school. We just wore uniforms. I'd say right. it was a public school with uniforms. Okay. That's what it seemed right. like. But it was cool, man. It just, he, he really taught me how to be a man at a young age and really prepared me for 
what life in college was going to be like. That's why I think the transition was fairly easy to me going from uh, Coach Hurley to Coach Beheim because of the, the two different coaching styles. It was like a, it was perfect for me going to that next level. It was so. And we'll, I guess I'll get to that in a second, talking about uh, Coach Hurley and Coach mm-hmm. Bayham and kind of how they're similar um, and, how, and how they're different. But I guess talk about your talk about your recruitment, I guess, when that really started to heat up uh, was because I know your sophomore years, you guys were really, really good. Yeah, I mean, you're good every yeah. year, but your sophomore year, I know you guys won like 27 games. When did that really start to, you know, pop I think, up? I think for me, it really started to heat up uh, the start of my sophomore year. Right? practicing and playing with varsity and that was the year I broke my leg mm. so I came in you know I, I just started dunking and everything for me at that point you know once you start dunking and you start to really realize your athleticism and take advantage of it and that's what I was doing I came to open gym one day and I think it was like nine division one coaches there and from Duke North Carolina St. John's uh, Florida it was a bunch of like major guys there and on the very last play of the game I go up and my leg just snapped <laughs> Damn, so in, in the open gym yep in open gym it just snapped and I think four days after that I probably had like six offers damn so what did you have to get surgery or how they do I, had, I got surgery the next morning because I broke my tibia I broke my patella and I had a partial ACL tear damn was so they already yeah, they was like this kid. My athleticism was was really showing, and it was just so much going on. And I was as a sophomore, I was standing out on a team full of like really good seniors and juniors and stuff like that. So I think for for them, it was the fact that you know the, the toughness, and then I'm sure Coach Hurley was talking me up and stuff like that. Who was some and of the I older was guys? Very unfiltered at that time. So my fault. My fault. Sorry. I no, it's all good. Who 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 were some of the older guys though on that team? Because I know, like you said, you guys was always stacked. We had a uh, Elijah Ingram, uh, Donald Copeland, Dwayne Lee, Seton that's uh, St. John, Seton Hall, St. Joe's. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a bunch of we had a a bunch of like mid level guys who went to Fordham and stuff like that, but were still really really good at the high school level. So, you know dealing with being behind those guys, older guys, bigger guys, you know, that really kind of molded me and got me prepared for like what was going to come after that, after rehab and stuff like that. So, you know, after I rehabbed, I had to take, that was the first time where I really had to take like lifting weights seriously. So I went from a predominantly like one-legged super athletic guy to a super explosive power dunker off of two and any way you put it like <laughs> so I think that that's where my career really turned because after that it was like it didn't matter who I was playing against somebody was probably going to get dunked on that game and you know me I'm screaming in your face all yeah, that I'm can you murder type shit. <laughs> right yeah, yeah so I, I was doing all of that and you know just I think uh I think that's how I caught coach Hopkins and coach Bayham's eyes just they saw me play at the Sovereign Bank Arena and they came down to see uh, A.J. Price and uh, Jason Frazier. And I think that game, you know, everybody, even my team was like, man, Jason Frazier, gonna get, he's going to kill you. Because yeah, last time we played Jay against Frazier him, from? He, Brooklyn? Uh, is he? It might be Harlem or something like that. But one okay. of the boroughs in New York. Okay, New York City. Okay. Yep. So we played them and, you know, my whole team kind of lit a fire under me because they just kept telling me how, how bad he was going to kill me. I think I went off for like, like 18, 15 and six that game in front of them. And he didn't have a good game. He didn't really have a good game, a bunch of dunks on him and stuff like that. And after that, it was like, yeah, we got to have this kid. <laughs> so you, and then you end up playing him shit at Villanova. Yep. Yep. He couldn't, you know, he had health issues too, man. He couldn't get, he couldn't keep his knees right. Let me tell you guys a little bit about our partners over at Bet Rivers Sportsbook. If you haven't signed up with Bet Rivers yet, now's the time because they are offering a $250 match bonus for your first deposit. But what sets them apart is that they require just one playthrough to turn your bonus into cash money. With their new Rush Pay instant approval, withdrawing your winnings is safer, more secure, and more reliable. With basketball season right around the corner, 
There's never been a better time to get in on the action by going to betrivers.com today or downloading the Bet Rivers iOS app. Must be 21 years or older. Gambling problem? Call telephone number 1 800 Gambler. So was it like, was it always Q though? Because I mean, like you said, it was, you had different offers. What, what was your time? Yeah, I mean, I had pretty much every Big E school and then probably half of the ACC school. Cuse wasn't my first choice. My first choice was Florida, but Florida didn't want to Shit, put- that was mine too. That's crazy. <laughs> Florida, Florida didn't want, I couldn't do the dorms, bro. I couldn't do it. And Florida wasn't trying to put me in a place that had, um, Florida wasn't trying to put me in a place that had like an apartment style living. They yeah. wanted everybody to live in the dorms right next to the gym. I wasn't with it. I couldn't, I wasn't sharing the bathroom. I was six, I was living on my own at 16 for the most part. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I wasn't trying to take that step backwards. And, you know, Cuse provided that. And then once I went to my visit with Cuse and all of that, it was, it was easy after that point. You know what I'm saying? I, I knew the difference between the players and, you know, what I got. I could see through the realness and the fakeness that you get from a lot of other colleges. Yeah. I think Maryland came really close. Maryland came really close to getting a commitment out of me, but they were trying to force me to commit. Like on my visit, like force me. Like, hey, if you Who's don't. Who's that, Gary Williams? Me, yep. Okay. And I wasn't a fan of him at all. I was a fan of the, like, the team and the atmosphere they had down there, but wasn't a fan of Gary Williams. But I could have got through that, through bad coaching you know what i'm saying I, yeah i played for one of the best <laughs> high school coaches there is you know yeah no question bad coaching would have been easy for me at that point you know so i mean i think at that time i was just ready to to go back home sit down and talk to coach hurley and see what he thought about it because he wanted me to go to virginia i was like no nah, that was too that was too preppy for me i couldn't do it <laughs> I couldn't do it, man. So I think Cuse was the choice. Cuse was a choice for me. It probably wasn't his first choice, but you know, I went with my heart and it was all written after that. And then Coach Hop was Coach Hop was the guy on he's recruiting you, right? Yeah, that's my guy. Coach Hop was always my guy. Coach Hop, right? He, you already know Coach Hop gonna run through a brick wall. Oh yeah, Coach Hop. And you know, we was like that too. We was on me too. He would always call me and check in on me and stuff like that once he got involved. So he kept, you know, and Duke came in once, uh, uh, what's his name? Lil Dang committed to Duke. They they called me because, you know, the whole Bobby Hurley uh, connection. So they called me and was like, well, Dang told them, like, you know, I, I plan on being one and done. So they wanted to get another guy who they thought was probably going to be a three, four-year guy and myself to go down there. But at that point, I was like, Man, it's too late. Like I can't, I can't, that's going backwards. And I didn't want to go down to Duke. I had already played there. I had killed, what's his name, at Duke. Then he ended up not even going to Duke after that. Um, what's the dude that dated the Kardashian? Oh, uh, Chris Humphreys. Where, what's that, at Bob uh, Gibbons? This, yeah. Oh, yep. okay. Down at Duke, bro. We, I destroyed okay. him. With the players? Yep. No, no, this was, this was with St. Anthony's. We oh, okay. High so school was... team. Oh, damn. Went down there and they was having, you know, they, because he was going there at the time. So they had crowd there for him. He night. We beat them by 40. He from Minnesota. <laughs> he ended up going to Minnesota too after that. That's <laughs> he, where he's he from, right? From Duke. I don't know where he's from. I would guess so, because that's where he tried to get Kim Kardashian to move. Damn, that, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Minnesota. I ain't going there, though. Oh, for, never. No <laughs> chance in the world. No chance in the world. You know, so you so you get to you get to Q's. Um, it's the so the recruiting class that's coming in, it's it's like one of the highest rated recruiting classes in the country. Mm -hmm. Yourself, D Nick, uh Big Moot. Mm -hmm. uh, was Louis Mikrowski? Yeah, Louis Mikrowski. Yep. Yeah, four. Who else? So that was the, that was the four, that, right? That was it. That was that it. Was so it. you, it I mean, you guys cool. coming in, and then you coming up because that senior year, your senior year at St. Anthony's, I think you're you were a parade all American. So coming in, you yeah. had to, you had to hype yourself coming in already. Did you? Absolutely. Did you guys feel that pressure 
as a group? And did you like personally feel that pressure individually? I I personally didn't feel that pressure. You know, I, like I said, coming from St. Anthony's, there was, I mean, there was pressure on me from the, my last two years there, you know, because we yeah. wanted to win a national championship and we wanted to repeat as champions. So the pressure it wasn't wasn't really much. I think the the media made it a lot tougher on us because you know you guys had just won they had just won a national championship. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, and they got everybody back but Melo. So in my head, I'm like, yo, we're gonna win another national championship. Like there's there's no there's no doubt in my mind we have that chance. And what people don't really remember is the team that won UConn that year. We was the last team to beat them. Hmm. UConn, UConn beat Alabama. We lose to Alabama by, I want to say, four or six. And then UConn kills them after we killed them at the at the Garden right before that. So that's, so that's 2003, 2004. Four, yep. And, and then they had Ben they and Emeka Okafor. Ben Did Gordon and Emeka Okafor. Oh, shit. Denim Brown. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. was laced. Damn, they 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 always had strong ass squads, regardless. Yeah, they they reloaded every year. It was annoying. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like how you get this many athletic dudes, and like Behan was so hell bent on me taking charges on Rudy Gay. He jumping from the three point line. That was my freshman year. Yeah. Oh like, no no no, Rudy Gay. No, you 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 play. I think Rudy Gay was a sophomore, so you had. You had already played against him that one year, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, so okay, yep. okay. But yeah, man, that that was the uh I think that was the 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 main part of it, just kind of getting there and just being ready for the pressure and then the media just kind of just throwing it at you, like, oh, what do you think about this? And you know me, I I talk too much. So I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna be, <laughs> oh yeah, we all gonna be just as good as Melo. Confidence. It's a terrible shit. thing. To, terrible thing to say. <laughs> what Coach Beheim say to you? He didn't say nothing. He just looked yeah. at me like, "Yeah, that wasn't a good idea." <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's, it it was cool. I, I I took on all the pressure. I think as freshmen, we kind of all folded, folded to you know, you know how it starts. You come in as a freshman, you're gonna play those those early games that don't mean nothing. And then as you get into December, you're going to see a minute slowly dissipate. No matter how good you're doing in practice or whatever, you're going to see a minute dissipate. He's going to go with the guys that he really trusts, you know, uh, that was there the year before, which made sense. Those guys won him a national championship. We were just young, hungry, and just wanted to play. So, you know, and I mean, we helped him. We, I mean, if it, I honestly think if it wasn't for the freshman, when he put us in against Maryland, Maryland and BYU in a tournament, and we helped bring them back. Then they put them in, and then Hack and Josh and all of those guys really went to work and closed out the game. That was that was perfect, you know. That that's exactly what we were looking for. But we didn't we didn't none of us played as much as we wanted to. I think we we talked more than we actually showed action. But you know, we got better as the years came along. Yeah, no, I was just gonna say. That freshman year, I mean, you got time, but not probably not as much as you wanted, obviously. But that yeah. second year, you kind of you, you blossomed into a into a role where you made a major impact. You know what I mean? Oh, what, yeah, absolutely. Once I got the starting job, that, I wasn't giving that shit back. Yeah, what what was it in between <laughs> that that first and second year? Like in, that summer going into it was, you know, what was the point that he was like, all right? I just, is, I just, I, I think once hack decided to come back for a senior year, I knew that I really had to kind of settle in and focus on my game and be somebody that Bayham could trust. Cause I knew minutes would still not there because everybody was still coming back. So I was like, only one that was going at that point was I think Craig Forth, he was gone. So the center spot opened up, but I didn't want to be a center. So I thought Mookie kind of had that window, but then I kind of got thrown into it. But he, I kind of got thrown into it because, you know, Mook and Beheim, you know, they, they didn't see always see eye to eye or whatever <laughs> initially. So, but yeah, I mean, I kind of got thrown into it and I just, I was like, you know what, I'm, I ain't going to give it back. I'm going to just make it work. 
because you know hack was on the block so i ended up technically being the the three four depending on where we were playing and then i just played the middle of the zone for the most part oh so you but, was in yeah. that middle yeah okay yeah the middle and the athleticism you know it, it I, th I think it helped hack when he, he had to guard someone on the post who I, I can come over block shots on help side where he can do the same for me if I was on the other side and Mook was in the middle. But we were so athletic. I mean, you had me, Mook, and ran Josh Pace and Jerry McNamara. That's a problem. Damn. You got, that's you got two playing. lefties Boy. that can stretch the whole backside of the zone. So it, it, def it, definitely, it definitely made it fun and I really had to just settle in and I just decided, you know, I'm not gonna go home for the rest of the time that I'm at Syracuse, I'm just not gonna go home. I'm gonna just stay here, stay at Syracuse and I'm gonna just train, trained all summer. Trained with the football team for a lot. Um, yeah. Tried to play football one year, and Bayheim shut that down quick. <laughs> <laughs> how close was it though? What, what, what was, you know, how close did you get? Like I like I like I went like the football coach was talking to me and like I was like I like I want to play I want to learn this game. He was like, well, you got to ask Beheim. I went to ask Beheim and he just kicked me out of his office. Get the fuck out of here. That's right, exactly. It's just like, are you? What are you talking about? Just get out of my office. <laughs> That'd have been wild though. Was they to put you at tight end? Man, you know, yeah, I was. I I just wanted to be a receiver. That's big as hell. That's the tallest receiver all time. <laughs> all time. Six nine. Damn. Word. It was just, I mean, it was just fun training with them guys, man. They, you know, keeping it really competitive, kept me in really good shape, kept my spirits up, you know. So I mean I mean, it was disappointing not being able to do that, you know, because I thought that would have helped keep me in even better shape and prepare me for basketball even more because I would have been a lot stronger because I would have to start lifting and stuff with them. But then it also would have took away from basketball as well. So yeah, Bayham knows what he's doing. Yeah, you did. I mean, you you did the right thing, bro. You you stuck with you. football. I, who knows? But you know, we need you out on that floor. I mean, because I would have got cracked, and I probably would have just walked out anyway. <laughs> you always, but look, you all you did stay. You for sure stayed every summer though, because I remember when I got up there, you in all the summers I stayed up there, you was up there too. I mean, you were up because you were. Up, I played two years with you, so I exactly. remember both summers. I remember, and then and then shit. So I'm after, right? I was there <laughs> the, the, the year after the, the year, a whole year after when I had the knee surgery. I was up there. Oh like, yeah, I ain't going nowhere till I'm fixed. <laughs> that's, that's a fact. So talk about. I, I want to talk about. Uh, get your, your junior year. So my oh five oh six. We're gonna go. We're gonna fast forward right ahead to. Mm. Uh, the the big east tournament okay we, so we i guess i think we really probably needed to win because back then that shit that big east was a motherfucker that it's shit a was gauntlet man it was a, like i try to tell people every time like y'all don't understand how tough the big east was we had nine teams get in all nine teams above 500 in conference and their re regular records and nine teams getting a tournament like that was nuts or two years in a row, and the, the our senior crazy. our senior year when we didn't get in, the ninth team got in, and we were the eighth team and didn't get. In. <laughs> That's a fact. We were ahead of them, and they got in. I'm like, oh, yep. that and was we a beat mistake. them twice. Exactly that 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 was a mistake. But, so, no, but yeah, go for back sure. to the uh, go back to that the Big East tournament because we we played Cincinnati, uh, then we end up playing Connecticut. Number who was number one in the country, then Georgetown, then then Pittsburgh. So kind of talk about like those four days because I remember shit in my head. I could, I you know, a whole bunch of shit come to my head. You know what I mean? Right. I, I'm talking about after for after the game because you know it was bang bang bang. Like we, you know, it was like it was quick every single yeah, game. It, was, it it was no like real layover. You had to get it. You was just there getting it done, and then the the next game the next day. And we, what was messed up how they did us is we would have a seven o'clock game. And then the second game was what one, or like noon or some shit. Right, I'm like, yo, that's wild, bro. We y'all can't keep doing this to us. And we were the first. To, weren't we the first team to play all the games and win all the games? No yeah. team had did that before us. 
I think, man, we had to be like, yeah, for real. I I think we was because Cincinnati, we we beat we that was the first game at like noon. Yep. Yep. So and we all, was the it first was time in every play. fucking game. We was the, and we did it two years in a row. First team to play yeah, every yeah. every game in the tournament and win and win and win the tournament. And then I think another team did it after us where they where they switched it and they had to play like five games. Because we only yeah. had to play like four games. So as they added more teams, it got bigger. But we were still the number one. So it doesn't matter. They shit don't matter. That's, that's a fact. What what's the what what moment or what game really like stuck out in your head in that in that tournament though? It was a whole bunch um, too. I think for me, I mean, everybody knows like the, the whole Jerry McNamara, like just constantly hitting game winners was like, like, I couldn't believe that. But a lot, I think one of the moments for me was uh, when we played UConn and, you know, they had uh, a squad, they had everybody. And they had number they had one two in the country. Seven, they had two seven foot one dudes on their front yeah, line. They was number one in the country. Yeah. They yeah. had Hilton Armstrong. Josh Boone, and like I struggled against them dudes all year because you, you, I mean, you can get past one. Neither one of them could guard somebody on the perimeter, yeah. but then you got another one standing down there. Like, what do you do with that? And then it's a six nine Rudy Gay on the other side trying to block your shot. And I, you know, I just remember, I remember Jerry driving to the lane and me going baseline, and me finally getting one on Josh Boone and just screaming in his face and not getting it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I remember too. So that, I, I think for me, that was kind of like, that felt good. And then, you know, having everybody like Matt Gorman come off the bench when we play, when did we play Georgetown? Was that the third that game? The year after? That was the third game? Yep. So that was the game where I had an awful game. And Bayham was on me. I couldn't get out of my own head. That, you remember what happened in the locker room, right? At halftime? Yeah. Yes. D, yeah, DC came in. He came in and his first thing, he grabbed me. Just punches me in the chest. I'm like, can he do this? <laughs> <laughs> Is this illegal? But it, I think it, when it happened, it kind of lit a fire in me and lit a fire in, in everybody else. Like, we, we got to play better. And we were winning. Like, we got to yeah. play better than this. No, hold on, hold on. Halftime, we was down 15. Against Georgetown? Yeah. That's why that's why I got punched in the chest. <laughs> that's why you got punched in the chest. And we, you know, we came out and I still, I still end up didn't, I didn't end up playing good that game. And I normally play good against Georgetown because that's when they had Roy Hibbert. Jeff and Green. I, you know, we me and Mook would torch Roy Hibbert and Jeff Green. Jeff couldn't guard, Jeff couldn't guard nobody on the post. Right. But we were, you know, we were really guard dominant. So, you know, you guys kind of were controlling the game, controlling the game. And it was kind of outside in first at that point. Bayhound was going going with the guards, you, Demetrius, and uh, Jerry for the most part, and Louis at times, and Josh Wright. But I think once they threw Matt Gorman in it, he was able to space the floor a little bit better, which left one it, it left one big on the inside, and it left uh, Matt Gorman either in the corner or Jeff Gordon having to guard Matt on the post, and he could do that. Matt was stronger than everybody on the team for the most part, yeah. and I think Matt really lighting the fire under the team. He had a couple threes, a couple buckets. Like it was over. I knew I wasn't getting back in the game after that. <laughs> <laughs> he played well that game, man. He very well, very well. And then, you know, I just became his biggest cheerleader. And I think at that point, that really showed as a team, like the consistency, kind of the bond we had as a team that, you know, I can put aside my how bad I'm playing and just root for the next guy to come in and, and do his thing, you know, just like he had been doing for me the whole year. And then Jerry just goes off. He's just hitting shot after shot after shot. I'm just like, I can't, like, how does he do this? But, I mean, even in the game, you kind of find yourself witnessing it as a fan. Like, this is nuts, bro. This is absolutely nuts. Some of the things as a freshman, watching you do a lot of those things as a freshman was kind of like, like, damn, we're like, we got a chance to be good. And as we start winning more and more in those games, like our, my my confidence is building, so I'm like, man, we we going we're definitely gonna make the tournament. I ain't worried about that. We didn't beat UConn, they number right. one. We didn't beat Pitt. Like, no, there's no doubt in my mind. 
even though we got an automatic bid, even before we got the automatic bid, I was bid. I was like, man, we're definitely gonna be in the tournament. And my, like my confidence was just so sky high at that point because we had played so well together, and we started clicking right when we needed to click. We didn't, if if you remember, we weren't really clicking the whole year. We couldn't Yo, really T, find a rhythm. We we lost at DePaul. T that last game of the year, bro. At I'm, DePaul, by like forty, bro. That's what I'm saying, bro, by 40. So, like, and, and it's, it's crazy because you look at our record. I think it was, like, like we were, like, seven and nine or something in the in the, uh, in the the Big East. But, you know, like we said, uh, those teams were so – that conference was so good. And the games we was in, like, we was we was competing in every single – like, we had a squad. I, I don't care what nobody – like, you see that talent, like, you, D, Nick, because, because like, bro, you said, like, GMAC had his run. Like, he did his thing in the – in the attorney, but I mean, you and Big Mook, I remember you guys, you, you guys were playing out of your mind. D Nick was shooting that thing, locking up. So it was, right. and like you talked about Matt Gorman, it was a collective effort, but they don't, like you said, that last game, we lose by 40, bro, to DePaul. And DePaul wasn't even, you know what I'm saying? DePaul wasn't They even had won like two games in the conference. <laughs> so we lose by 40. You know, you already know, you talked about the media, the media come in, they, Oh, Syracuse looking on, you know, it's on the down slope with some bullshit. Oh, yeah. We we would have we were definitely the first four out. Definitely the yeah. first four out at that point. You know, everybody was doubting us. And you know, when you when you're doubted by so many people, it's easy to start doubting yourself, no matter how much work you're doing. Because then you start questioning everything that's going on around you. And you know what I'm saying? The media's questioning the lineup and then we start questioning the lineup and stuff like that. But I think we with practice and you know us being around each other and all of the stuff we had going just focusing on us and just coming in staying confident and getting it done I mean because confidence is I mean between you Demetrius and like Louis and Josh like we didn't let no and me we didn't let no confidence at all like right if we could lost 20 straight we were still gonna be confident we've been to be talking our shit yeah right exactly I mean we Remember, we was down by 40 to UConn at home. We ended up losing, but we only lost by six. Yeah, right. I remember that. Yeah. Like, and they were screaming at halftime, hey, let's try to beat them by 50. And we looking at each other like, damn, can they do that? <laughs> Is that possible? And we That's went on a run, brought them and came back. Fell short, but that was a hell of an effort. Yeah, we, 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 uh, like you said, we clicked. At the right time, those those four games, it was like, I mean, come on, bro. You look at the team. I'm gonna go through a couple of the guys. Uh, Cincinnati, Devin Downey, James White. You know, they had the uh, Muhammad, Eric Hicks. You know what I'm saying? They mm -hmm. had that. I'm just talking about goons. They had. They always had a oh, couple. Yeah. You know what I mean, down low. There was a problem down low. There was a there was a problem. Seth McGowan, I think, was on the. Uh, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Um, in the second game, you know, you kind of speak for itself. Number one team in the country, Beast. They they had six pros. They had all first rounders in their starting lineup. Marcus Williams was one of the best point guards in the country. Yep. Left handed, tough. It just he his vision was crazy. And yeah, then Georgetown, every position, bro, that was nuts. Every every position. Then Georgetown, Jeff Green, Roy Hibbert, Jonathan Walls, Brandon Bowman, Ashanti Cook. Uh, I didn't realize they was that low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I, I remember, and, crazy. And, and then Pittsburgh was loaded like a motherfucker championship. Uh, Carl Krauser, all of them. Aaron Gray. Aaron Gray. Yep. What's my man had name? the little light-skinned boy that looked like Predator. He was on their team. Oh, uh, Ronald <laughs> Ramon. AT, so what was my man name? Because remember that one game we played Pittsburgh, and he damn near gave you a concussion. Oh, the and white I, dude from Canada. That's K Kendall, I think. Yeah, Kendall something. He was Kendall, Levon Kendall. Yep. Yep. He but they that he was six nine. He was tough. He was tough. He was kind of like he was kind of like a poor man's Chris Humphreys. Yeah, he he was tough. Right. He did like the dirty, you know what I'm saying? Like he was yeah. he, like like I mean, that's he tried to knock you out. Right. <laughs> he tried. Yeah. I was hot. He damn it did knock me out. I ran right across really? him, right into his elbow, split my whole mouth open. I remember it, T. It was right by our bench. Yep. I, I, I popped that. up like, where he at? I was looking for him. <laughs> Brad, Brad over there, boom. Brad right there. 
Oh yeah, he was on it. I was spitting up blood. But yeah, he, uh, you know, a crazy story about him. He didn't do much at, at Pitt, right? As far as like scoring the ball until like his senior year, he was like their leading guy, like his senior year. So we played against Canada <laughs> when I played for the USA team, when it was like me and Rudy Gay and, and all of them UConn dudes. And yeah. so we played against him. He would go off for 44 on us. Damn. And they beat us. He was, was just playing his role at Pittsburgh. Bro, he go off of, like, ain't nobody paying him no attention because we like, oh, he trash. Yeah. 44. Easy 44. Damn, what was he playing? He was playing the four, but he was shooting. Yeah. He was <laughs> that was his team, though. Yep. He had a lot of he had a lot of freedom, and we kept switching lineups and stuff. Like, you know, I ain't with that whole after being with Bayheim, I wasn't with that whole switching lineups. Once something's working, let that shit ride until the to the gas run out. Yeah. They kept switching lineups, Phil Martelli and, and all of them kept switching the lineups. I was like, man, this is this is trash. And sure enough, they beat us. I was like, man, that, that cost us the gold medal. Oh, the Canada team, did they end up winning it? Mm, I don't think so. Nah. We, we, they, they beat us, but they was losing to everybody else we was beating. Yeah, they was losing. Okay. Damn, he just had the game yeah. his whole life. Yeah. He, again, I don't remember nothing he did after that. Yeah. He, <laughs> yeah. That's, was that before or after that he, he tried to knock you out? That was... That was after. Oh, that was after. Damn. That so was he was he, he was really trying to get on your head, but he, just... hey, he was he gave me a 44, a 44 piece chicken nugget. Hey, I, I'm gonna try to knock you out and then give you 40. That's crazy. <laughs> Kendall, disrespectful. Man, and the crazy thing is, is with us, we couldn't really go off like that because we like the the rotation was crazy, and we had all NBA. We had Nick Fazekas. Yeah. So he many. was serving. He was serving Nick. He was serving Nick. He's slow as hell. The from Nevada. Yeah, but, yeah he's, hey, he, but, he got but, two left feet. Hey, but boy is a bucket. <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt, no doubt. He was just he slower than bucket, molasses. Man. Yep, him. Uh, Curtis Withers was on that team. Mm. UNC Charlotte. Yep. Yeah. Uh, who else? Marty Collins was on that team. Damn. Okay. Temple. Yeah. We, Locked yeah, up. Yeah. We had a, we had a we had a, a squad. Who else? Uh, was Allen Ray? Allen Ray was on that team. Yeah, that was tough. Yeah, we were we were we were definitely loaded. Like the, some of the dudes we cut were crazy. Ronnie Brewer, he got cut. Oh, okay. He's in the league for like nine years. Yeah. Uh, who else? Uh, who didn't make Deron Williams didn't make that team? Deron Williams. Darren? The Darren Williams. Darren Williams. He didn't make Damn, that from team. Illinois? Mm-hmm. Damn, I, that's crazy. Right. Who else? Um what's the little short point guard that went to Oregon? Aaron. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh played for Houston and all that. Yep. He didn't make the team. Yeah, damn that. No, nah, you had that was some uh, motherfuckers on that team for real. Yeah, was that was so? Know. Was that was that going into your senior year? Yep, that was leading into my senior year. So you, do, what did you think that did that really help you though? Playing in that going into your senior absolutely. year, absolutely, because it 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 made me believe. Like at that point, I knew I was I was capable, you know. Yeah, and I think Beheim realized I was capable. But I think a lot of people thought like, oh, you know, Beheim, he made the team because Beheim was there. But they'll tell you, now nah, he outworked everybody that was there. That's how yeah. I made the team. And I wasn't even like one of the last people in. Like, now nah, he on the team. That's the energy bus right there. <laughs> yeah, facts. That's, yeah. So. K-Mark. And I, you know, that just, it made me just feel like I belong, you know? I was like, okay, so it, it ain't just, it ain't just me. Like the hard work and stuff is like, it's real, it's paying off. Like. And knowing that those dudes knew who I was and respected my game, like it took me into the next year, like ready for whatever. But you had a good, so you had a good year, your, your junior year, like you averaged double figures, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, and it might, yeah, you averaged double figures and you led the team in rebounding. And then your senior year, 
it was more like, like you said, you come from playing on, on the U.S. team. You, mm -hmm. I mean, you playing against that competition, so your confidence is already right at a whole like other before, level. Before I got before I got hurt against Drexel, I was averaging a double double my senior year. Yeah. Hell and yeah. then that one injury, the first injury that made me miss a game, I was like, I just, I couldn't get back right. I couldn't get my knee back right after that. And I didn't want to have surgery because I didn't know the severity of it. So I just, you know, my athleticism kind of took over. I just kept playing no matter how bad my knee was. Like, remember, I was getting my knee drained like, every game. after every game, bro. Sometimes even after practice, like yeah. my knee was huge. And then, I mean, it, it, it was some games where it was like, I was just out there hopping around on one leg. But I mean, most people don't even know that. See, let's let's be, yeah, that's what I'm saying. A lot of people ain't know it, but, and and let's be honest, like, you were, you were an NBA prospect, like your athletic ability Absolutely. and just, like you said, your energy, how you could run the floor, like you could, mm -hmm. you could guard multiple positions, pick a role, you could switch, you'd be able to keep it front. So like you was a, even coming out of high school, like you was an NBA prospect uh, and, and, and a lot of, you know, those injuries, cause you had a lot of, you was dealing with a lot of injuries, bro. Like you, yeah, you know, like you said, you, you know, having to get your knee drained and I don't think people understand how athletic you was, dude. Like, I'm talking about everything I was doing my senior year on one leg. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I remember in practice, we used to do the little uh, three man weave. And then just I just remember seeing shit like, you know, what I mean, shit, you know, you jump behind when that shit just, I mean, the net flying just up. Throw like, it in. Right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, I guess I, what I'm trying to get to, how was that, though, bro, on you mentally, though, knowing that you couldn't, you know, you couldn't play you know, to your full ability, you know what I'm saying? And, and having to fight through that and not really, you know, people don't really know that, you know what I'm saying? And then yeah. when you have a, a, a bad game or you struggle, you know, and people ain't saying that about that, but you know. Yeah, the first thing you know was, the it. first thing everybody really talked about was, you know, he's just inconsistent. When they don't realize, like, you know, bro got his knee drained before the game, went and played the game, and then got his knee drained after the game. Yeah, that's crazy. I can't really tell him, but then my numbers ain't really adding up. You know what I mean? So that that was really for me. That was really tough. But at the end of the day, it was like screw it, just keep playing it, and hopefully it'll all work out. But you did. But shit, I remember one moment, and I and I your senior year against no, was it senior year? It might have been junior. Shit, I don't know. But I remember one moment you had fucking against Rutgers. Mm. It, it, Bro, coach, you know, coach on the side. No, fucking Terrence, no, no, no. Yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> cause, cause, shit, it was really you were trailing, mm -hmm. and then I think Josh Wright uh, dropped it to you, right? Yeah, he just drove and dropped it. Dropped I, it. I don't know why. I stepped right back, into that thing. Said... <laughs> people, people don't know you were shooting them shits though. Probably, you was working on them shit. Right, and that's and that's the thing what people don't didn't realize is like they they saw me from junior senior year and they forgot about how I played freshman and sophomore year when I had a little bit more freedom to stretch the floor when, when Hack and Josh Pace were there because they weren't really – they did Hack shot threes, but Josh Pace really didn't shoot threes like that. So, you know, I was always if – you, if you look back at footage, I just stayed in the corner. Josh, Jerry would drive, kick to the corner, and he would make me shoot it. And I was knocking him down pretty consistently. But then, you know, the more guards we got, the the more confidence Demetrius got in his shot. And as his shot got better and improved, he was like, don't shoot the ball. <laughs> don't you shoot it. Put you like, right no. back in that, in that uh, well, shit, you was always, I guess Big Mook was really, it, he was playing the fire. You was on that wing, though. Yeah, yeah. For, I mean, so, I know those last two years for sure, right? Yeah, yeah. He was a five, I was a four. And he, I mean, I played, I technically played the five when, before that, but I was never in the post. It was always, it was always hack. Even if, like if Matt played, they threw Matt in the post. I, I was just the five because I played the center in the zone. He just wanted me to play the center in the zone because I was, I was a little bit more, I was better going left to right than, than, than Mook yeah, was. Yeah, you could guard. You could yeah, guard. so. But. I think once once Mook came along like mid junior year, it was kind of it was a lot easier to move him to the five and then let me play the wing, let me play the wing as far as like 
being able to guard and close out on shooters and force them to where I needed them to be to make good plays and get the traps and stuff we needed to get. So it just, you know, everybody learns at their own pace. So it, I, I think, you know, once Mook really got it, we were good to go. Then everybody kind of collectively came along and that's when it really started to get fun. It just so happens I just got hurt. And then it, it, it was tough to get that chemistry because you remember I, would, I couldn't practice much after that. He he kind of gave me that, what he did with Jerry. He was like, no, just, you know, just sit out, relax, and do your rehab and stuff like that. And I wanted to practice, but it wasn't much I can do. It was either practice and possibly not play or don't practice and play. So I went with the don't practice and play option. Yeah. <laughs> and I probably, I regret it a little bit because at the end of the day, when I look back at it, you know, I didn't really have nobody in my life that could have told me like, hey, you know, you shouldn't play no more. You should shut it down. You should just redshirt and come back next year when they got a really good recruiting class and Johnny Flynn, Dante Green, and everybody else. And then, you know, you be the center on that team and you can kind of lead them however you see fit. Damn, so you had that option. Yeah, I could have. I could have shut it down, but nobody – there was nobody there to tell me that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they, they wanted you to play, T. You already know. Yeah, right. for sure. Right. For sure. They was like, oh, you know, it's just a meniscus. It'll be all right. But that, menis that meniscus turned into two torn meniscus and a micro fracture. So I was I, like, I was done for like a year, really like a year and a half after that. Yeah, that micro fracture ain't nothing to play with, T. Right. Especially back then. Now you can get a micro fracture and be back in nine months. <laughs> it's easy to come back from it now. But back then, nah. He was gonna get that surgery, and it was over with. What what was it? What was it like playing for Coach for Coach Beheim? Your overall experience, and 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 going back to the beginning, kind of what I was saying about mm -hmm. Bob, Bob Hurley. How is you know how are they similar, and how are they different? Him and Coach Beheim. You know they, they they're completely one hundred percent opposite. Complete opposite. Coach Hurley is a very hands on, in your face like. You better get it done or else type coach. Coach Beheim is a, he's more of a, you better get it done, but he's very hands off. Like you're here now, you're, you gotta be an adult. I don't wanna have to chase you around, force you to go to class. Right. And his big thing was trust. If he can't trust you to go to class and get good grades, how's he gonna trust you with his job during a game? You know what I'm saying? So it, as as young adults, we don't get that. Like, I didn't get that until I graduated. Like, okay, this is – and I've seen it with other guys. Like, okay, that's what he was doing. He was protecting his job, as you should. You protect – a seven-figure man. You, you protect your job at all costs. So, I mean, with that, it's just – he was – it was the perfect transition for me because I was coming from a real tough, hard-nosed coach. Who who cared a lot and just really wanted to help guys get out get out of the inner city and be safe and see everybody get a scholarship and then I was coming to a coach that was a little softer who had a lot of fire in him but was like we we meshed very well together that's why like he came when he, whenever he, when I whenever I knew, you remember when I was in trouble every time he would come in the locker room and you knew he was getting ready to hand me it I would just not sit down yeah. <laughs> Just stand up. There's nobody that's going to want to yell in somebody's face when they're taller than me. Like, he's not yeah. going to look up and yell at me for long. So every time he would come in, he would just have to yell at me and get it out. But it, it would be short. And then he would just jump to somebody else. Yeah, and I would just stand up the whole time. Like, no, I ain't sitting down because I know he's going to jump right back to me as soon as I sit down. That's a fact. But it, you know, it, it it was perfect for me because it, it I already had that like leadership mentality coming from Coach Hurley. Even as a freshman, I I felt like I was a leader on the team. Like you asked hacking him, it like, bro, really thought he was a team captain. I really thought I was a team captain as a freshman. Like, you was you always vocal with OG. Yeah, you, like you, like you was. I remember, that. and we were. I think when I was, we had we had a pretty close team. I, I mean, guys hung out, and like I remember. You know, you call in players, players only meetings. So, like, you you were a vocal guy. You know what I'm saying? You were absolutely. Of, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I and I prided myself on that, and that and that all came from playing from from Coach Hurley, like playing for him. Like, you had to be vocal. Like, if you wasn't, like, we were all running. <laughs> like, 
to the point where, like, I remember one time we, we did something. I think somebody laughed in practice, and he didn't like it. And he was like, just start running. And he yeah. left and forgot we was running and called somebody, like, called the maintenance people to tell them to tell us to go home. We was in there for two hours just running in a circle. Oh, <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. But it worked, you know, all them, all them championships he got and stuff like that, it worked. And that's why, that's why a lot of people like Beheim and a lot of coaches like to get his players because they have discipline when they come in. That's one thing you don't really have to worry about discipline and maturity. You ain't got to babysit them. But for me, it was like, I had so much freedom. It was hard to hone in on it as a freshman. My sophomore year, I kind of got it like, oh, I was bugging last year. I should have just focused, got that done, and just we probably would have won more games and everything. We won a lot of games. We won, what, 26 games, 25 games my freshman year? But it was just like I just – I was ready for it, but I wasn't ready for it like I thought I was. And then when, but once you figure it out, it's, it's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That freedom, T. Like you get up there and you you got all the attention. Uh huh. T. You already know. Like, what year was it when you were there? Was I, I, was it your senior year or your junior year where y'all won like twenty eight games or something crazy like that? That was uh probably my. Was that what? What was West there at that point? Nah. So that was so. So my my uh it was my red shirt junior year because I had tore my ACL Johnny yeah. the freshman year. But his sophomore year, we was like 28 and 10. We lost in the sweet 16. But that next year, when I left, Johnny left, Paul left, and they had mm-hmm. Wes had because Wes was red shirt in that year, so he was just okay. Practicing. okay, that, okay. Next year they was like number one in the country. Right. Like, but that but that year y'all game. won, y'all, y'all was went that uh, y'all won 28 games. Like the the win streaks, 15, 16, 17, 18 games. Like, remember, we didn't experience that in four years. We, like, we would go on, like, 11-game win streaks where we beat all those ducks in the in the NYC area we was playing against. Like, I didn't want, like, that was fun and all, but I wanted to, we all wanted to travel. Yeah. So it was fun watching y'all because when we left, that's when y'all started to travel. To the Bahamas, they started to do all of that. We was like... What happened when we were I think, y'all, I think they went to Alaska before y'all one time. Man. Or a they, couple man, times. We was in New, we never left New York, bro. Yeah, that's we but I fuck with playing in the garden though now. That shit was fun. That's different. I can play in the garden all day. All day. But like you you could miss me with the Cornells and the, you know, filling the quota games. I hated those. That's I wanted to play. Yeah, it is, it is. But it, it it's it's tough when you see teams like uh, Gonzaga and stuff who have to play those tougher games and stuff like that, which kind of makes it easier for, for them later in the year if they have, like, losing streaks and stuff like that. Where they say, well, they play so-and-so. And for us, it was like, oh, if we go on a, a three-game losing streak, they're like, oh, they're the first four out. Like, damn, we didn't beat two number ones this year. <laughs> yeah, our conference was so tough. Best conference in the country. Exactly. Hands down. They, like. Every year, every year I was there, we had the best conference in the country. So it was like, and then when that broke up, I was like, oh my God. Like, the ACC. <laughs> yeah, that's just it's so, it's so different, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's different. And the ACC week as hell this year. That shit, that shit ain't, that shit ain't. Yeah, chilling. we might have like three teams getting a tournament. That's just, yeah. All that, that shit. So what's your, What's your favorite or your most, I guess your favorite or your most memorable Coach Beheim story? Locker room, practice, game, whatever. Uh, I I think my most memorable moment was after I hit the three for Rutgers. And I'm like, I'm just super excited. You know, I'm, I'm excited Josh put me in that position. I'm happy I hit the shot. I'm even more happy that Quincy Doobie missed his shot. Because if you remember, he threw it 90 feet. And it rimmed out. He was he was hooping that game. <laughs> right. So everybody's Oof. like, everybody's wondering about my celebration when I'm running back and I'm like, Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so so I'm I'm doing this, right? But I'm looking, I'm because I'm like, why isn't anybody guarding him? And it's like <laughs> three seconds left. And everybody ran to me and celebrated. And he gets the ball, takes the dribble, and launches it 90 feet, and it hits the backboard and rolls around and pops out. 
Damn, you right. Oh I even, I was, yeah, we wouldn't even remember in that shit. Right. And that but that's where that that's where this came from because I'm like, no, he's still open. I'm excited, but I'm like, he's still open. Damn. Because remember, he had 41. He set the dome record that night. Man, he was shooting that bitch from one step Every, inside half, yo. Everywhere. He was cold, bro. He dunked on Mook on the baseline. <laughs> Don't tell Mook that. Oh, yeah. I'm going to text Mook that right now. Hey, Mook, why you let Quincy Doobie dunk on you, man? And he hung, though. Because it, it, no, it wasn't no hard man. dunk. It wasn't no hard dunk. It was like the joint where you just got to, like, the rim ain't even moved. Yeah, you ba- you barely get up there, but you're gonna hold on to that rim for dear life. Yeah. You know he's only about sure you- yeah. <laughs> he only weighed about 120 with Tim's yeah. on. Just a straight <laughs> hooper, yo. But I think I think that that was one of my biggest memories. And then one of the memories, even though it wasn't like a great one for me, I remember was senior year when we played uh, the first time we played against uh, Wilson and uh, Wilson Chandler at the Dome. Yeah. Remember, and he and somebody turns it over, they get a steal, and I'm guarding Earth. the full length of the cart court, and I'm thinking he's gonna turn it. I'm thinking he's just gonna reverse <laughs> lay it, and I'm like, I'm up in the rim. My head is like in the rim. I'm trying to block it, but he uses the rim to protect. So I'm on the other side of the rim, and then he just dunks it hard. And then he act like he didn't dunk it. He just kind of jogged down, didn't even celebrate. Yeah, I'm no. like, damn, at least yell at me, maybe look. <laughs> That's him. He ain't gonna say nothing to you. That makes you better. I was like, man, I had to live with that for a long time. Like, dang, he dunked the shit out of that. How did he even do that? <laughs> hey, bro, he was athletic as hell, though. He was, yeah, he was, he was super athletic. Twelve years super in the league. <sighs> Them years go by fast, man. Yeah, twelve years in the league, and he 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 was another guy who went through who was through a lot of injuries. He had both the little hip labrum so on both hips. Mm. Yeah, the same shit Isaiah Thomas had. So it's that's tough. Yeah, that's tough. But yeah, Coach, Coach, Coach B, what what uh you know another one though that uh funny memory that I had of you and Coach B uh Coach Behind was I guess after the I don't know which game it was. Well, probably when we won it, shit. When it, you mm-hmm. went to the you went to the to the po- to the uh, yeah, to the presser with uh with Coach and G. Oh right? yeah. I know exactly where you're going. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then when he said the 10 fucking games, I just remember you, you know what I'm saying? I remember seeing your face. What was right. going, What was that like, though? I mean, you know, I'm very confident in myself and I'm very confident in my team. So it's like, you take one guy out of the equation, another guy's going to step up. And we proved that the next year. But I think if you take GMAC out of that equation, I think you have a chance to step up and and really shine even more than you did your freshman year. I think Josh Wright really has a chance to step up. And then Demetrius has the neon green light his junior year instead of his senior year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think I definitely think we would have been we 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 yeah, definitely would have more than 10 games. He tripping. Bro, we 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 had 20 we won 20 what? Four games the next year without GMAC, you know what I'm saying? Not saying we didn't need his leadership, but we definitely would have won a lot of games without him. So, you know, I, I thought, personally, I thought that was a little little bit misguided. And, and at in that moment, it kind of felt like a shot. So I was like, and at that, like, I, at that point, I was like, I was ready to get up out of there. I'm like, oh, he's he wilding. But I see where he's going. He was just trying to light a fire in the media. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But in, in, that, in that moment, as a player and as an athlete and as a man, that it, it was low key disrespectful to the guys that was on the team. But you know, all it did was light fire on everybody. Everybody started playing good after that. Like ten games, what? Let me show, let me show him something real quick. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, to to his credit, it worked. I'm pretty. I feel like it, it worked in the media. It it worked for the team because I mean, we played good, even though we we ended up losing to. AJ Price and them, and the first round we lost to Texas A&M. That following that, but oh, I mean, that, uh, was fun, oh. that was a fun year. AC Law and them, huh? Yep, yep. Joseph AJ Jones. Pri- AJ was AJ Price on that team. Yep, AJ Price was on that team. Oh no, no, no! You talking about Texas A&M? Yep. Nah, AC Law, Joseph Jones. AC Law, yeah, yeah, that's who it was. Yeah, he got drafted. Yeah, he was. He was in the league for a little bit. 
Yeah, Golden State. For a little bit. He was a tough. He was a tough little guard. No, he was. Tough. And then they had those hey. those like weird bigs. But me and Mook destroyed them that game. Yeah, we just we destroyed them that game. I don't know. Shit, G Mac didn't play. I don't even think he played that like that first like two two three minutes. But AC Law, AC Law went right at him because you know, man, he was dealing with that hamstring injury. The groin. AC Law just kept attacking, attacking, attacking. I think he had like eight, nine points like the first three minutes of the game. G Mac was done because he just kept going at G Mac, kept going at G Mac. That lateral movement was tearing G Mac up. Yeah, he couldn't. He couldn't move his groin. He couldn't move. It was. It, it was over with. Yeah, but that's what it was. It was his groin because yeah. he heard. He reactivated the second to last game of the of the Big East tournament. Yep. Yep. So, uh, it was it, it was tough, but man, we we played against some really competitive teams. Or like, we had no shortcuts. We had no easy easy roads. We had one easy road that we tricked off. That was it. We had an easy we road to the final never, four. Hey, we should have never. Got left out of that tournament, dog. That year, you no, gotta think we okay. was. Or they go by the last, especially how they did it back then. You go by the last ten games. We was eight and two, and we beat Georgetown. They they stormed the court. They was number Georgetown was number one when we beat them. Well, I don't know if there's number one team. One like, or two, they had like a twelve five. game winning streak. They was up right. top five. Yeah, yeah, they was top five. And and so how the fuck? I remember being in Bayheim basement, dog. You remember that? Yeah, we was all was in like, the couch. And then I'm he like, did. Hold on. You remember? Gotta be you gotta another region, right? <laughs> <laughs> and they're not doing sixty-eight teams this year. What's going on? Damn! I, I'm. I, T, I gotta got out. Got to buy Everybody, it, everybody did. We. I think we all drove hundred miles an hour back to campus, flying. I I I, I hopped in with somebody. I ain't had no car. <laughs> <laughs> we were. Flying. I, I remember me and Josh doing like a hundred down down them back roads, like just pissed off that like like how did that even happen? And Bayheim knew it was happening because if you remember when that one region was ending, he got up and he walked out and he never came back. And I like I thought it was weird, but I didn't put it together till later. Like oh he knew we wasn't getting in. He knew if we didn't get in in that one spot, we wasn't gonna get in. We just kept looking like. What's what's happening? <laughs> Damn, that shit was. That, but we it, it we ain't deserve that, man. No, and we and just think we we gave Notre Dame a run. We needed to beat Notre Dame, but like with me not being healthy, who else? It, somebody else was. Damn, that was, was that was quarterfinals. T. Luke Herringotti and them. Right. Yeah, we we did lose. We ain't lose by a lot though. We lost by I think I want to say six or eight. Remember, that's when I went down. I went down in the, like, with, like, five minutes to go. Like, and that, that was just it. I Like, I couldn't move. My leg, my knee was swollen. I banged, I went knee to knee with Aaron Goatee. My leg, my knee was swollen. That was the game where I had, what did I, I had 16 and 20. 16 points, 20 rebounds. Yeah, yeah. And didn't play the last, like, five minutes of the game. It's like we we just we couldn't get into a rhythm, and that really I think that really threw us off. We couldn't get a rhythm going for me at all after that. Yeah, we were supposed to we were supposed to win that game for real. But regardless, though, yeah, even the way we played that game, there was no way because they were guaranteed in Notre Dame was yeah. guaranteed in yeah. at that point, and we took them. We had them sweating the whole game. And didn't have your starting four, who was your leading rebounder, against a team who had great bigs, right? Rob I was Kurs, what, the fourth leading scorer, Rob Kerr's and Luke Herringotti, bro. Rob Kerr's could play; he got drafted too, yeah. or he could. Yeah. He got, and they had shooters too. Man, they always had shooters. Always, I forget who was they. Who was well? You know who else they had? T. Russell Carter. Oh, he was a problem. He was so he was annoying, tough, bro. He was strong <laughs> as shit. He was tough. He was tough. Yeah, they uh yeah, we had no business losing that game, man. No business whatsoever. Nah, we ain't so T, you had I mean you had a you had a good career, man. Like you fought through a lot of injuries. You had a lot of good, like I said, you played in 127 games, you won a lot of fucking games. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but then, so so then after your career at Q's, you end up going playing overseas. You know, mm-hmm. experiencing a whole bunch of different countries. Uh, you played over in the in the. It was now it was the D League back then. Yeah. Uh, but specifically, it was it was a country that you played in. And we played, we got to play together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. play together in, in New Zealand, which was a, a fucking beautiful country, unbelievable country. Yeah, I was still, like, to this day, that's still, I tell people all the time, they're like, what's the favorite place you play, the, your favorite place you play? And I was like, New Zealand. Hands down, it's a beautiful country. The people are beautiful. Anywhere you would know you, I'm for it. Yo, so, yeah, no shoes, T. Like, people was just walking outside. Yeah, I would was- do it. I took to that culture real fast. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No, what was what was your favorite thing about that though? Like being in New Zealand. Um, I think for me, me personally, it was you know getting to the point in my career where I was probably I was on the downside of my career at that point. So you know, getting a chance to end my career playing with somebody that I play, I always wanted to do that. I had a chance before that to play with Josh, but it wasn't enough money, so I didn't come out there. Um. But, you know, getting a chance to play with somebody that I played with, you know, you were a lot younger back then, so you you were a lot more fiery and your your attitude and stuff towards the game was a lot different. So to see that growth and be able to play with you, and you were at probably one of the peaks in your career as far as, like, scoring the ball and being a leader and stuff. That was fun as shit for me, to see that growth and just being able to be out there and be a part of that was so dope. And then just to experience the culture and you know, hanging out with you and Lindsay all the time and just to see what you guys – See what the whole thing was like. I, that's why I said it was, it, it was hands down like one of the, my most favorite places I've ever been. And I would go back in a heartbeat. Yeah, and, and you know, you know, Linz came out here like last month and come check. Yeah, I saw, I saw. Yep. Yeah, Linz, Linz, Linz he was doing, all over the place too. He was in LA for a minute. Yeah, he had he had his young fella out here playing, so he was. Okay. I think he was he he was doing all that. But you know, I was already I was I had played in New Zealand a few times, so yeah. When when you came out there, we kind of already had we had exactly. things that I, that was a fun yo we had we had fun man and I think the competition wasn't like you know it wasn't great I thought the competition was good I thought it was decent those dudes played hard they play hard as shit so play even hard. if they aren't that good they are gonna play hard yeah they gonna, that, yeah, that, gonna play that makes a world of a difference because that makes you better at that man that shit was beautiful traveling though Nelson oh yeah you remember Nelson. Mhm. Yeah, bro. Riding up through the mountains and all, like, man, it was just. That was one of those rides where, like, if, if we had to take like a, a eight hour bus trip, like, you could stay awake that whole eight hours because it was just it was always something to see. We got there, dog. We got there because we flew together. We flew. Mm-hmm. We, we went in L.A. They had to play. It had to play that day. <laughs> Yo, right away, but but then we had to do that long ass, like you said, uh, van in the back of the van. Yeah, six. We had to take a six hour ride. Taranaki got off, got off a, a sixteen hour flight, and then had to take a six hour ride to Taranaki and, and for a scrimmage at all. Like, yo, really? T, we was like, yo, oh, come on, yo, that shit was tough right there. My legs was heavy. My feet was swollen. All of that. We still won, though, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We wasn't tripping that week. Man, I know you remember. Uh, man, Jeff Green was a trip, dog. Yeah, he, that, that is a he is a different character. He was a fun dude, but he different. <laughs> he, he different cat. We now we had a good time in New Zealand, bro. That was that was fun, bro. That was a good experience. Yep, that was dope. So the let, food was amazing, dope. And I still ain't stayed in an apartment better than that. There was no place. I stayed overseas. That apartment was so much love, and I know that was the apartment for the um, for the breakers, but still, yeah. that was love right there. Remember that Takapuna? Yep, that's where we stayed at. Right, it was what a mile from the beach. Yeah, we wasn't far, bro. Three bedroom apartment. <laughs> that shit was crazy, bro. <laughs> Man, that was so dope. That and then they had a pool right outside, right outside our balcony. Yeah, we used to have some good times, though. Yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely go back. I try to go back the next year, but Jeff ain't have everything in line. Nah, he ain't. He he. They still he wasn't. Just, he wasn't doing it right. He 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 tricked off the bag. <laughs> he still owe me some money, man. Oh yeah, he. 
I gave up on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. It is what it is. Like, he, he, but I ain't gonna lie. He did take care of though. He 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 took care of us when we was there. Like he made sure things. Oh were yeah. Straight, you know I mean, we was good. Food, anything we needed, he took care of that for sure. Yeah, he, he it was straight. So what you think uh about this year's Q's team? Like, I mean, you see we're struggling. Wow. We're you know, what what's one thing that sticks out? Would be like, that's the issue. Man, it's just the. the the cohesiveness they don't really you know they they usually just everything is like really relying on buddy 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 and buddy gonna get off it's just everybody it's tough for everybody else to kind of find where their role is and i think you lack chemistry when everybody's still trying to find themselves and you got one guy that's completely like locked in you know what i'm saying he's got the young guys you got edwards who's pretty good but you know the bigs don't really get touches and that's what's that's what's tough when the bigs ain't when them bigs ain't getting the rock like that you know when they do get it they got to take full advantage right from the rip and if they don't you know they ain't, they ain't getting the ball you ain't getting the play call for you again so i mean it, it's been it's been tough to watch just because this ain't what i'm used to you know what i'm saying not used to seeing the uh, under 500 Q's team or 500 Q's team or team, you know, you're looking at like, damn, man, this is going to be the first time he don't get 20 wins in, in like 30, 40 years or something like that. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if they have recent, because they haven't been doing like particularly well recently in the, um, in the postseason, or I mean, in, in the regular season. So they might've been a time where they got less, but I don't know. I, you might be right, bro. It's been tough. I think they. I think in other years where they haven't had great seasons, they still end up squeaking out twenty wins by the end of the season with tournaments and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, they, I don't know if they're gonna get close at all this year. <laughs> That's gonna be it. <laughs> it's just it, it's been tough to watch, man. It's just not. It those young dudes. They ain't no dogs. They ain't got no dogs on that team. First of all, it's not enough of them. We had dogs that every single position yeah you know what i'm saying we had dogs we had dudes that can spit you was a dog and a scorer so it wasn't like we, we had our hands kind of everything i was a dog mook was a dog and his respect with demetrius was a dog louis when he was there louis was a dog like yeah a lot of those dudes i don't know that any of those dudes are playing and this is what it looks like from the outside looking in it looks like a lot of those dudes don't play with a chip on their shoulder we go out there and we we felt like no matter how we was ranked or what our record was or what we did the game before, we always felt like we had something to prove because we always felt like the underdog. And I feel like a lot of these kids nowadays don't have that same mentality coming into it. You know, they have McDonald's All-American and they feel like they made it. Or they Parade All-American and they feel like they made it. For me, Parade All-American was complete disrespect. I was like, I don't want to be a parade all American. I, I should be an all American. I should be a McDonald's all American. I should be a, a Jordan class or something. Especially since my high school coach was coaching a Jordan class a game that right. my senior year. So I was like, yo, he but he flat out told me, he was like, I don't think he was ready for it. He was like, them dudes are bigger, stronger, more athletic. I was like, all right, I'll take that to heart and just got in my bag. These dudes nowadays, they want you to give it to them without having to work for it at all. They don't see they don't see all the dark hours where like me, you, Demetrius, Louis, Josh, we we in the gym with the cars pulled up with the headlights on because the, the right, light manly. is off. Right. And we playing full court or we playing one on ones. You know what I'm saying? They don't see the fights we get into on the courts and stuff like that. They don't see none of that. They don't really Sometimes, understand see, that. summertime they I remember that right. you threw the ball at me when I was right. when I was uh it's, man, we oh, we always went through we went through we was in uh when we was in New Zealand. Oh That's just man, because TV. we passionate. Yep, yep. yep. Facts, we passionate. Bro. We just right back that. to going to dinner that same night. Like it wasn't no big deal. That's a fact, bro. That's that's when you really, like you said, you you need those type of guys because it means something. Like you said, it means something. Mm -hmm. So when that type of shit happening, like we we boys, but like when we going at something, like we competing, like it's shit. Yeah, we, it's, we it's, it's, war. it's war in between them lines. That's a fact. So we're gonna get it. If you don't, if you're not having those or uh, in practice or every, you know what I'm saying? Like we had it fucking often. But like if you're not having mm -hmm. it like, you know, sometimes here, a couple of times every now and then, it's something missing, dog. You know what I mean? And and, and if you think about it, 
when we was at Q's, bro, it was it was if it, it was either Josh Wright going at somebody, uh, JT going at G Mac or trying to lock him down, talking shit. Um, Rennell Heron, uh, Rev was talking shit when in the early years before you got there. Uh, I'm constantly talking talking shit, going at hack. Demetrius talking big shit at everybody. He don't, he don't care. You know what I'm saying? You coming in doing the same thing. So it was like we we had dogs and wh- what's his name? Desha- Remember we got Deshaun. He don't talk. He just gonna give you. He just gonna work you. And he's like, bro, what what just happened? <laughs> Man, Deshaun Wright was so cold. People don't know that. Man, so who else? We had Mike Jones my senior year. Mike was cold. He he ended up getting up out of there, but damn, he was tough. He, he, he could have been special, man. He could have been a pro. He could have did a kick for sure. If yeah. he could have kept his mind right, he could have been tough. He was playing behind D Nick. He had the opportunity, bro. Like D Nick needed a rest. <laughs> All he had to do was stay focused on the book. D Nick was, was averaging twenty that year. He, he led the Big East in scoring that year. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like he. he mm-hmm. So it was like he wasn't really gonna play if Mike, you know what I'm saying? Mike wasn't really gonna But the but that but that's the thing. If Mike could have stayed in his bag, he would have shot above Deshaun. Yeah. He would have shot over Deshaun, right? And then remember, Mook couldn't stay out of foul trouble, especially the first half of the year. He couldn't stay out of foul trouble. So that slid me back to the five. That would have slid Mike Jones to the four, kept Demetrius at the three. He would have killed at the four because he would just went out to the wing. Then we had Paul too, though. Oh, we did have Paul. He wasn't playing in front of Paul. <laughs> yeah. See? yeah, he wasn't playing in front of Paul. We had Paul, yeah. yeah. It was, it it was wild times when we was up there, man. It was, it was, it was fun. It was not fun at times, but for the most part, man, you look back and you just like I, I wouldn't take any any of it back. Only I would do a few things different. I think only thing I would have done different is. I definitely would have just set out my senior year and just red shirted. Just got the surgery, got it out the way, hadn't maybe fixed that and, and, and gone on from there. I might even have been back before it was over and probably been better than ever, but that's the only thing I would change, really. Just go back shit, and I, we can work look a little back, harder. We can look back and say, shit, I, I look back all the time. I had one more year, for real. Mm-hmm. I had one more year. I, I look back like, damn, I could have – did some shit. Went back, went back for that year, and then you you could have been that piece that they needed to beat Oklahoma. Who who knows? Who knows, man? Or no, we lost that year to Oklahoma. My last year, my last. That was year your scene. Okay, so the following year, that's the year they lost to Michigan. No, they lost. No, no, they lost to uh, Butler. I want to say when Ao got hurt. Oh yeah, Ao did get hurt his his senior year. It's another guy. Ao dealt with a lot of injuries because it's even even our freshman year. Ao Ao was hurt the whole year, right? Yep. My friend, God, imagine if we would have had him. Because it was really T like you you and Ao kind of like right away connected in that summer. Like we you was riding mm-hmm. in the summertime. You know what I mean? Yep. And and you was because I remember he always had that. You had that little motherfucking uh that Toyota Supra. <laughs> you was pushing that motherfucker. I swear. I- that hey, shit was man. like a race car, boy. It was. It was turbocharged. You want all right? Here's a crazy story right here, bro. Boom. So you, I think I paid. I probably paid like two, three thousand for that car, <laughs> and it wasn't even in bad shape. It was just like, it was a T top. It was turbocharged to start it. It ran very well, but it was like little things, and it was all stock. It was like little things that needed to be replaced, like the ceiling on the on the on the sunroof and all of that stuff. It would leak in the AC and all of that. The heat didn't really work. Easy fixes, right? Yeah. So I ended up selling it for four thousand, and then I go online. The dude I sold it for, sold it to for four thousand. Guess how much he turned it into? Eight forty. The car was worth forty thousand oh, dollars. Dang, he must have fixed was, that joint up. No, he, it was stock. It was a, a nineteen ninety two stock. Turbocharged with a supercharger, Toyota Supra. That is a like, that was the rice rocket that everyone wanted back then. But I, I lived, we lived in Syracuse. I had no idea what I had. I come from Jersey City. I just wanted to drive a hoopty. That joint had a spoiler on the back. Everything. 
God damn, I remember yeah, that joint. Everything. Ayo couldn't even fit that. 40, you could barely fit that shit. So I had the seat laying straight back, and I would sit on the back. Couldn't nobody, <laughs> couldn't nobody get in the back. You had to go in through the trunk if you wanted to get in the back. Man, I remember a, one time I'm in the AO in there in front, you in the back. I'm in the motherfucking other side. In the trunk. You in the trunk. <laughs> Yo, that shit was crazy. I remember that car. That shit got everywhere though. Yep. I won a few, I won a, a couple thousand dollars racing up and down sky top with it and everything. I don't care. <laughs> Man, that shit was cute. Had some had some good times at Q's, bro. Oh, so yeah, let's move it. Let's uh, I, I'll get you out of here on this one, bro. I just we you talked about we talked about cycling earlier in um, mm-hmm. in the convo. Kind of tell me like how you got to that man, how you got to that point, and and because you really you've been going hard with it. Yeah, so you know I don't know if you remember, but like my senior year when I was at Syracuse, like I used to have Demetrius and Mook out on the the mountain bike up in the back in the back of Sky Top. There's a bunch of bike trails and stuff. Yeah, so I w- I would be back there doing that with him. So I, it's always something I've been interested in. I just didn't know how good I could be. And, you know, I think the year before, like right as the pandemic hit, it got to the point where I was pretty much, I, was, I had pretty much retired and just kind of enjoying my retirement and coaching. And I was lifting and training every day still like I was going to get a job, but I was gaining so much weight, man. So I ended up getting to like 289. I was 289 and I was just round. Like around, I had abs on top of fat, and it was just like I just I remember just looking at myself in the mirror one day and being like, I think I was in a store. I was in a store looking for mirrors, and I came across one mirror and I looked at it and I was just like, this is like this. Who the fuck is this? And then after that, I was like, like I gotta lose weight. Like this is not how this is not how I wanted to be at this point in my life. So at that point, man, I just I started biking more and doing more cardio and a few people noticed me biking and it went from, you know, doing mountain biking to getting on the road bike and that competitive, that competitive side kind of kicked back in. It was like, man, you, you could race if you want, like you're pretty good. So I'm like, all right, well, let's do it. And then it was like, for one, it's the most expensive sport to get into the hands down. I've spent way too much money on bikes. <laughs> Like just buying and selling bikes left and right, but until you find the right one. But I mean, I I got into it, man. I really like dove into it head first. Got really competitive. Uh, started to get sponsors and stuff like that. And next thing you know, man, I went from 289. And I'm back down to 230. I was and that was like six months. And then with the whole pandemic, the season was a lot shorter and stuff like that. So this is this is this would have been like this is like the first full season we'll have. And I'll probably try to start my season like mid to late mid to late March. So you know they started in January, but you know I, I wanted a little bit more time off and focus. I started working. I finally got a a real job. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was tough. That was tough having to do that. That the whole. Uh, nine to five thing that's why it's been so tough for me to do the show because you know, i work i work from 2 a.m to like 10 a.m in the morning and i come back and i work another shift just to pick up some overtime hours from 4 30 anywhere between 4 30 and 10 30 at night yeah so you tired right so i don't be wanting to i don't be wanting to commit to you know say hey i'm gonna do this radio show I'm going to do this radio show, and then I can't do it because I get locked in at work. That's what happened to me this weekend on Saturday. I was supposed to do a show with Mike Bristol, but I couldn't I couldn't get out of work last minute. I was supposed to leave. The boss was like, yeah, I need you. So I had to go back, and that's that's double time. That's good money, so yeah, I you couldn't turn that. that down. All right. We need that. We all, I need that shit. Right. <laughs> yeah, they, for real. Yo, T, man, I, I appreciate you coming on, bros. It was real good catching up with you, dog. And uh, no problem, bro. I appreciate us. you having me, man. Yeah, all love. Well, hopefully, uh, we can have you again down the line and keep doing what you do. You, I know you say you, you, you continue with the biking. You, you've been training. You, you're gonna start your season up in March, so you're gonna continue with that. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. You'll see the pictures and videos I'm gonna put up for sure. No doubt. Good luck with that, man. Keep doing your thing, and and I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate it. You keep this podcast going, man. Give me something to do when I'm at work, for sure.
Facts. Let's tune in. <laughs> Come on and, and get your coworkers to subscribe too. Shit. I got you. I got you. For sure, bro.